Very, 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 very warm. Good morning to all. It is such a wonderful and a blessed opportunity to serve God. Amen. And this morning we are all excited. And what a wonderful, glorious worship we. I couldn't understand, but I thank God that the Spirit of God can make you understand. Good worship. Praise God for that. And I believe that everyone who is sitting in their homes, everyone who is watching us. or watching this service they are all blessed and i thank god for that well <clears throat> this morning uh, i thank god that he <clears throat> kept us safe in this covid-19 and all these uh, days when it is a difficult time god kept us safe and we thank god for that and i thank god that all of you who are hearing my voice god has kept you safe but there are so many people around in the world who are under the weather they are probably going through a time of challenge why don't we extend our hands today and pray for them father whosoever is sick because of corona virus whosoever is is a, a feeling lonely in their homes i extend my hands towards them and lord you extend your hands towards them cover them with your presence every person who is in prison who is in hospital who is alone who is thinking where are you god father with your mighty presence extend your hands towards them and may they feel your presence and may the name of jesus be glorified amen 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 Well, we thank God that my God and your God never sleeps or slumber, because He is alive. He is not a dead God. He is alive, and He can hear our prayers and He can answer our prayers. So, believe me. If you don't believe me, believe in the Word of God, and He is going to see you through. If you are going through a challenge, if you are going through a darkness and a time of difficulty. He is our guiding light. Jesus Christ is our guiding light, and He wants to make you and me a guiding light to this perishing world. This world is perishing. Jesus Christ is coming soon, and it is a responsibility for us to be the light of God. If we turn off the lights, we can't see anything at night. But once. the light is on we can see everything ask god to make you and me the light so that this dying world could see the light and could see jesus christ in our lives and i thank god for that well i bring uh, greetings uh, from punjabi masih church i know pastor luke is away and uh, i bring greetings to all the leadership and all of you who are watching wonderful and a great leadership and a wonderful and a great church god has planted wherever whenever you gather it becomes a church and i thank god that he gave me that opportunity thank pastor luke and all the leadership who gave me this opportunity to come and share the word of god i don't have a lot of time because god wants to share something in a little time he can do in one minute he can do in one second God can touch you in one second. One word released from the presence of God, one word spoken by God can change our destiny, can change our life. Let us uh, open our Bibles quickly. Before I dive into my message, this message is I believe this message is from the Lord and this is for somebody who is watching us who is hearing us and will watch us later as well this message is from the lord how do i know this is from the lord couple of days ago god gave me two messages and i was uh, not at the same time but at different days so i am i am preaching in the evening and i was preparing for one of the messages and uh, i looked i said god you have two messages which one should i preach and then in maybe a uh, few hours 
I got a call, or maybe the following day, I got a call that I am preaching to you. Then the Lord showed me, these are the two messages. So this is the message from the Lord for you and for me. This is not a preaching session. This is not I'm going to speak something and go home and then we are the same again. I would like God to speak to you. I would like God, the Holy Spirit, to inculcate his word in your heart so that it could become a mighty, mighty tree, a mighty tree which brings forth fruit in even in the season when there is famine. You understand in famine, nothing prospers, but in famine, the word of God prospers. You will prosper. I will prosper because we are the children of God. The title of uh, my message is Basking in God's Plan. So if you are watching and if you have a, a, a pencil or, or a paper, just note down basking in God's plan. What does basking mean? Basking means resting in the plan of God. Just relaxing in the plan of God. Sometimes we get so agitated. Sometimes we get so much frustrated that we do not even understand what basking means. Basking means to be still in the presence of God. God has a plan for you and for me. When we bask in God's plan, he reveals his purpose in our lives. He reveals the plan in our lives. And I thank God that when we bask in God's presence, in the plan of God, he will take us one step at a time. When we start to trust in God, he will take us one step at a time. He is not going to make you run 100 meters, but he will show you through his guiding light one step at a time. Let's open our the word of God. Numbers chapter 32 verses 1 to 11. I don't know your language, but if you are following me, please open up your Bibles. If you do not have a Bible, call the pastor or call one of the leaders and get a Bible. Either an English Bible or a Bible in your language, you must have the Word of God in your hand. And when you have it, when you read and you meditate upon the word of God, it starts to bring forth fruit in our lives. It starts to bring the plan and purpose of his plans in our lives and we start to prosper. So open up your Bibles, Numbers chapter 32, verses 1 to 11. I don't know if you want to read it in Tamil. It would be good. Please read it, uh, all the 11 verses. Yenagamum. Upatrendam Adigaram, one Lerande, Padanora Masanam. Numbers chapter thirty two, one to eleven. Ruben Putrerkum, Kath Putrerkum, Ad Madimel, Migavum Trala Yundade. Our Gal Yasia desatayum, Kilaya desatayum, Partha Bode, at the Ad Madigal Tagunda Edementary, Kandargal. Agayal Ruben Putrerum, Kath Putrerum Mande, Moseum, Asaranagia, Eliasarium, Sabayan Pabukalium Noki. Kartar Israel Sabikumun Baga, Muriadita, Adarot, Tibon, Yasir, Nimra, Esbon, Yeliolagum, Sebam, Neba, Payon, Inum, Patanangali Seren, the Nadana, the Adu Madagal Kitagundedam, Umud Adiark, Adu Madagalunde, Umudi Kangalil, Yingalke, Daye Kadatanal, Yingale, Yorda Nadika Pram, Kadanda Boga Paniraga, in the Natai, Umud Adiark, Kani Achiaga, Kodukamendum, in Dargal. Upper the Mose, Kath Putterium, Ruben Putterium no key, Ungal Savodra Yutaturke Pogail, Ningal Inge Yupirgalao, Katar Israel Putterke Kurta Desaturke, Avergal Poha the Badike, Ningal Avergal Yurayeti, the Retro Poga Pandigar than Na. And the Desate, Patpaturke, non Ungal Pidakale, Kades, Parnea Vilurundi, Anupinapode, Avergalum Yupri Sedagal, Avergal Yeskol Palataka Matum Poi, a Desate. Partu Vande, Israel Putter, Kartar Tangalaka Kurta, Desetr Kupoga the Badike, our Gilirdayete, Denetru Poga Paninargal, Adinal, Kartar and Nadile, Koba Mundavaragi, Uttamamai in a pinbutina, Kenesiana, Kenesianana, 
எப்பின் குமாரன் காலேபும் நூனின் குமாரன் யோசுவாவும் தவிர And Lord, you open this word in our hearts and we give this word into your hands. This is the manna which you gave us. Let we eat it and grow in you. Open this in our hearts, our minds, our ears in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, <clears throat> as God has a plan for you and me, God had a plan for the nation of Israel. he had a plan for the whole nation you are a nation and god has a plan for you and for me and the plan was <clears throat> after 400 years of slavery under the egyptians god led them out of egypt through the leadership of moses so moses was anointed by god and god had a plan for moses to take them out of bondage and take them to the promised land god had a plan for moses god had a plan for the nation of israel and the plan was to take them across to take them to the promised land god always has a good plan for us god wants to take you and me to the promised land god did not reveal the plan 100% what is going to happen along the way but along the way one step at a time god started to protect them god started to take them but because of their stubbornness because they were adamant because they did some things which were not right god had to take them through the wilderness isn't this a story of our lives sometimes we go through challenges sometimes we do things which are not right sometimes we start to blame the devil but it is our wrong decision many times we take wrong choices we take wrong decisions which god does not want us to take those decisions so along the way when israelites were choosing against the word of god god had to take them through wilderness in the wilderness god was their protection during night he would become a pillar of fire in front of them so that they could see the light and during the day to protect them from scorching heat in the desert he would come upon them as a cloud he provided for them when they were in the wilderness whatever was needed they were asking god was providing god is providing you and me whatever we are asking but are we basking in the plan of god are we in the will of god can we rest in the will of god instead of murmuring instead of saying why is this happening why this corona has come what is happening to this and that instead of basking in god's plan we sometimes choose to make statements which are not right then we had to go through the wilderness but still god is your protection and my protection and when the israelites were ready to cross the river jordan they were ready to go to the promised land something happened when israelites were in wilderness they were growing their cattle were growing they were uh, if you read uh, the, i don't have time to go through all the passages god took them through wilderness and during the wilderness time 40 years their clothes did not get small or large their shoes were kept safe everything they possessed was kept safe 
but their cattle were being multiplied and their children were being multiplied and they were growing in numbers. So as soon as they were ready to cross River Jordan into the promised land, all of a sudden we go back to the passage and we read the Reubenites and the Gadites, there were 12 tribes of Israel and those 12 tribes, God had placed them in different positions, different areas, different responsibilities were given to the, those tribes. Today, me and you have a responsibility. God has given you and me a talent to fulfill the plan of God in my life and in your life. God has given us gifts and talents. God has placed in us his destiny. He knows where we are going. But along the way, we have to understand that sometimes we deviate from our calling. The Reubenites and Gadites were the two people, the clan, and two tribes who had very large herds. They had a big flock and they saw the land of Jezer and Gilead were suitable for the livestock. So they came to Moses and Eliezer, the priest, and to the leaders of the community and said, verse 4, the land the Lord subdued before the people of Israel are suitable for the livestock and your servants have livestock. If we have found favor in your eyes, they said, let this land be given to your servants as our possession. Do not make us cross the Jordan. God wanted to take them to the promised land. God said, I'm going to take you to the land, to the land where milk and honey flows. And that promised land was just crossing the Jordan and that promised land would start. But when these two tribes, when their leaders, they saw green land just before crossing Jordan River, they said, wow, this land looks so good. This looks so beautiful. Moses, we don't want to go to the promised land. Please don't take us to the promised land. This land looks good to us. This land looks good to for our cattle. This land is good for all of us. Please let us stay here. Isn't this your story and my story? Looking at the worldly things, looking at the things which are not what God wants us to give. We, we get satisfied. We just stay where we are instead of moving ahead, instead of moving to the promised land, instead of going to the promised land. We just stay where we are. We see the lust of these eyes because they saw the green pastures. They saw green areas and looking at these pastures, they lusted. Their eyes saw this and they said, wow, this is good for us. We don't want to go to the promised land. Isn't this your story and my story? We sometimes just look at the worldly things. We sometimes just look at what good we have. Wow, I have something good. Wow, I can understand the word of God now. Wow, I can sing good now. I can worship good. I can do this good. I can do that good. But God has a wonderful plan for you and for me. He wants us to cross the Jordan. There will be a difficult time when crossing the Jordan. Because they saw the Jordan, it was a river. There was no bridge on it. And they said, how are we going to cross it? They forgot how God parted the Red Sea when he took them out from Israel. He parted the Red Sea. They forgot about that. And many times we forget what mighty miracles God has done for you and for me. We just look and stand at a problem 
and we said no 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 i am good here i don't want to cross that jordan i don't know how i will cross it i don't know what will happen i don't know what is going to be the future i cannot see anything there but what i can see here i am i am good here across the jordan they could not see the greenery but they were looking at this side but today if you go today if you go and see the land on the side where they were standing they were see greenery it's all brown and across the jordan it's all green this is today we many times do not understand what is happening what is going but god knows and later on moses said now moses is giving them a lecture moses is preaching to them and what he is saying to them in verse 11 because he is talking about his four their four fathers the the israelites and verse 11 says because they had not followed me wholeheartedly not one of those who were 20 years old or more when they came out of the egypt will see the land i promised on oath to abraham isaac and jacob you see god's promises are 100% yes but me and you have to take them by faith but when we do not take them by faith and we start to murmur do things in a, in a way which are not right god is telling them no one will be allowed to go across the land but when we look at ourselves god has promised us eternal life god has promised us eternal life and god wants to take us to the promised land which is the eternal life so i'm going to in in second kings do you don't have to read you can read later second kings chapter 15 verse 29 says in the days of pika king of israel tigalath palisar king of assyria came and took ejon abel beth mecca jona kadesh hazor gilead and galilee all the land of naphtali and he carried them captive to assyria they were all later on who looked at the green land they were all made captives they all were taken away by the assyrians god has a wonderful plan for you and for me why to settle for little why to settle for this world why to look at this world god has a wonderful plan for you and for me and i am going to <clears throat> wrap up my message by giving you some of the, the the verses from the word of the lord god has a wonderful plan for you and for me we should bask in his plan we should rest in his plan we should not get agitated frustrated by looking at a problem because river jordan had no bridge but god made a way for you and for me god made a way through jesus christ between the promised land and this world which looks greener to us there is a plan of god and that is the cross where jesus christ gave his life for you and for me he became the mediator he became the bridge between the promised land and us and this world he became the wonderful and the beautiful bridge through which we can cross the word of god says whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life we 
and you have been promised a plan by God. The Reubenites and Gadites also had a plan. They were also supposed to go to the promised land. But they could not. But here is a God who says, believe in me. Whosoever believes in me, his sins are forgiven. As far as the east from west, I will throw away their sins. And you know, the promised land, the land where there is eternal life, is a holy land. And no sin can enter that land. No sin can enter that land. That is why Jesus Christ came to abolish the sin. To put away the sin. But only for those who believe in him. Only for those who accept him. Only for those who receive him. The plan of God in your life, the ultimate plan is to take you and me into the promised land, which is eternal life. Here we are on this land for a few years. Some will be here for, for uh, 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, or maybe 120 years. We can't go more than that. But this is just a little time. The twinkling of an eye, we will be gone. But where will we go? That is the question. And Jesus Christ said, I have promised you, I will take you to the promised land and the land where I will be. There will be no tear, no crying, no sadness in that land. That is the land of eternal life. That is where God will be our light. But when we are walking on this world, do not see the greenery of this world. Do not see good things of this world. Do not get indulged in good things. Get indulged in worshipping our God. Because he is holy. He is holy. He is holy. He does not want us to bow before other gods. We come from the nations where there are 33 million gods. Or maybe more. Anything is moving. People think this is God. God is not from this earth. God cannot be created by hands. This world has created and made gods by hand. They put garlands on them. They put paint on them. They make them look so beautiful. But they are all dead. My God and your God died and rose again on the third day and he gave you and me a promise that I'm going to come soon to take you and me into that promised land. What do we have to do? How can we go there? We just have to bask in the plan of God, acknowledging and accepting him as our personal savior, acknowledging him as Jesus Christ, our Messiah, Acknowledging him that he is the one who said, I am with you. Isaiah verse 30, chapter 30 verse 21 says, Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way, walk on it. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. And the Holy Spirit is nudging your heart, speaking in your ears that Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life. And in 30, Isaiah 30 verse 18 says, Blessed are those who wait upon the Lord. We have to wait upon the Lord because it is His plan. Somebody said, if it is God's will, it is God's bill. It is His plan and He wants to take us to the promised land. Let us wait upon the Lord. Bask in his presence. And then the word of God says, Isaiah 49 verse 15. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? 
though she may forget i will not forget you see i have engraved you on the palm of my hands your walls are ever before me i have a plan you have a plan which is not a good plan because god has a good plan for you and me god has a purpose for you and for me let us bask in his presence who said i will not forget you i will not for- i will forgive you i will not forget you but you are in my hands jeremiah 29 verse 11 This is the last verse I'm going to give you for I know the plans that I have for you declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and a hope may God bless you with this word and I thank God one more time that his word is alive and Jesus is alive God is alive bask in his presence because he has a good plan for you and me He has a wonderful and a blessed program and wonderful and a blessed destiny for me. Don't look at this worldly things. Don't look at the problems. Look at Jesus Christ. Amen.